Welcome to another online content module for the 6th grade Georgia Standards of Excellence in Social Studies. Today we'll be exploring what students need to understand about environmental issues in Canada. If you have previously taught the 6th grade Social Studies curriculum under the GPS, you might at first glance think that these standards haven't changed much. After all, the environmental issues themselves haven't changed. We still have pollution, acid rain, and the extraction of natural resources on the Canadian Shield, which were the same topics we had previously in this region. However, there is a new level of specificity apparent in the revision of this topic, and it has more to do with the verb of the elements and what students are doing with that verb. Note that students must explain, as they previously were asked to do, but now they are to explicitly explain the causes and effects of each environmental issue in order to make known in detail the impact of these issues. It's important to remember that how we treat the verb of the standards and elements is directly related to the level of rigor students experience when learning our content. Too often we treat some verbs in the standards as if they were synonyms, especially when it comes to describe and explain. Since these standards require students to explain a good deal, it will help us to reflect for a moment on the differences between explain and describe when it comes to student tasks. A careful reading of the dictionary definitions of each clarifies for us the level of rigor required for students when the explain verb is used. When we say they are to explain causes and effects of acid rain in Canada, for example, we mean for them to be able to explicate, make known in detail, interpret, and make clear the cause of the phenomenon. In other words, students don't just need to know causes and effects of acid rain in Canada or tell about it, but they need to be able to teach it. There is a big difference between telling and teaching as we all know. It's imperative that the instruction you design for students doesn't ask them to just tell about acid rain in Canada, as the verb describe suggests. Instead, they need to make clear in some type of oral, written, and or pictorial presentation their interpretation as to the causes, effects, and ultimate impact of acid rain. When we tease apart the meanings of the verbs and standards like these, it helps us to better plan the types of learning activities our students must do in order to reach the level of rigor intended in the standard. Let us turn our attention now to what students must explain when they work with this content. The phrase to include the Great Lakes in element A means for students to focus their explanations of causes and effects of pollution and acid rain on one of the most significant regions in Canada, the Great Lakes. People in both Canada and the U.S. depend upon the water from the Great Lakes. The Great Lakes have supported life and provided drinking water, transportation, power, and recreation throughout history. Since the Great Lakes are shared between the United States and Canada, it is important for the two countries to work together to keep the lake's environment clean and healthy. The last time students learned about the Great Lakes was in fourth grade, and at that time they simply learned that it was a physical feature of the United States. Unless you help students understand the importance of the Great Lakes as an environmental and economic resource, they will have difficulty grasping the significance of pollution and acid rain on the region. When students learn about the importance of the Great Lakes to Canada, they should come to understand both the environmental and economic significance. The health of the region depends upon the health of the Great Lakes, and students at this age are able to understand the multidimensional meaning of health, that it can signify the physical health of plants, animals, water, and land, but that it can also be seen as an indicator of economic health in the region, since freshwater is such an important natural resource to this area. By the 1970s, the Great Lakes were becoming well known for their water pollution. In some places, fishing was unsafe. In other places, there were no fish to be found in the waters at all. The factories around the Great Lakes had been using them as a dumping ground for years. The Great Lakes were routinely home to waste from industries, sewage treatment plants, and runoff from highways. As a result, they became increasingly contaminated with pesticides, fertilizers, oil, grease, and salt. 
Students will need your help understanding that the pollution affecting Canada in the Great Lakes region is of two types, water pollution and air pollution. The sources of both are linked to the heavy industrialization of the region, and both types of pollution bring with them serious negative effects. There are several important effects of pollution on the waters of the Great Lakes. The effects shown here focus on the way, on the, way the water of the Great Lakes is impacted by pollution. Using good visuals will help students make sense of the important ramifications of unchecked pollution on the Great Lakes. The top satellite photo shows what algae bloom on Lake Erie looks like from space. The bottom picture from Bowles Harbor on the Michigan coast of Lake Erie can help students begin to understand what it might be like to live in a place where water sources are impacted by these types of pollutants. Paying attention to water and air pollution issues in Canada will help students to generalize both the causes and the effects. The air pollution from this factory, which could be located anywhere in North America, will eventually reach the Great Lakes region. Since there are many factories and they are often in production daily, this means that a steady stream of air pollution is constantly making its way to the Great Lakes. Unfortunately, the same pollution that harms the Great Lakes and the atmosphere above it leads to a secondary environmental issue in Canada, that of acid rain. The air pollution associated with acid rain is likely to come from U.S. sources. Wind patterns tend to move pollution north from the United States into Canada, as the map on this slide demonstrates. That real-life factory we just saw a picture of participates in not just spreading air pollution, but also contributes to poisoning the precipitation that falls on the Great Lakes region. Creating infographics to explain how acid rain is both a cause and an effect of pollution in the Great Lakes region will help students to reach the intended rigor of this element. Having students combine infographics with real-life photos of the effects of acid rain will support them in developing deeper connections between the concept of acid rain and the effects that it causes. Students need clear and concrete information about the causes and effects of acid rain. Factories and automobiles produce most of the pollutants contributing to the development of acid rain. Coal-burning power plants and trucks are also polluters of the air. Sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen oxides are among the most serious contaminants released into the air. When enough concentration of these chemicals are present in the atmosphere, they mix with the water molecules and turn the water acidic. Clouds, snow, sleet, or raindrops containing acidic agents are all known as acid rain. Acid rain is destructive to property and damaging to all living things. Additionally, it has economic ramifications for Canada and has led to renewed emphasis on ecological awareness in the country. Element B of this standard refers to an entirely different environmental issue. The Canadian Shield is a unique landform that has significantly affected the history and economic development of Canada. For our students' purposes, it is important for them to understand that the Shield is the source of precious non-renewable and renewable resources that provide important economic benefits to the country. In addition to the resources shown here, the region supports a vast hydroelectric hydroelectric power network that enables the timber and paper industries to flourish while simultaneously supporting Canadian needs for electricity. These factors make the protection of the shield an issue of primary importance to Canada. The Canadian shield surrounds Hudson Bay. This map shows that it covers most of the eastern half of Canada. About one and a half million people make their living in the mining industry in Canada, most of them in the Canadian Shield. In addition to mining, the other major economic activity in this region is logging because of the vast boreal forests that cover almost half of the land in Canada. Loggers enable the forest to be used as timber to make a variety of products including lumber, plywood, and wood pulp for making paper. There are two main threats to the Canadian Shield that students must be able to explain. First, as we have seen, the mining industry that is concentrated in the Canadian Shield poses threats to its health. While mining is a prosperous endeavor, it leaves permanent damage to the Canadian Shield and increases air pollution in the region. 
Blasting and digging with heavy machinery are common activities in mining areas. Mining processes emit sulfur dioxide into the air, contributing to the development of acid rain, and killing plant and animal life. Even worse, chemicals used in the extraction of minerals contaminate the soil and water in the region. For its part, logging destroys the forests and the benefits that it brings. Logging companies often cut all the trees in a given area, leaving large treeless gaps in the forest. Results of deforestation include water, reduced water quality, erosion, and loss of wildlife habitat. Heavy machinery can leave the forest floor compacted. This makes it hard for new plant growth to begin. Environmental issues are often contested by groups with different perspectives. In Canada, the government has published facts on deforestation that minimize it as an eco environmental concern. At the same time, there are Canadian watchdog groups who publish information contradicting the government's findings. Exposing students to real-world text in areas of controversy such as this pushes them to take a stand and defend it, using sources they have critiqued and deemed reputable. This is yet another way of taking the explained verb in this standard to its intended level of rigor. This list contains the sources used to develop this video as well as some additional links to sources that can be used in the classroom to teach this standard. We hope that you've enjoyed this presentation and that the information it contains will support you in providing excellent instruction in the 6th grade Georgia Standards of Excellence in Social Studies.